Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Chris Hartwell, who's an um, assistant professor out of our uh, business school. And um, he's been teaching face-to-face uh, -face and online, broadcast in all the environments, pretty much that we have at the university. Um, and has a PhD in organizational behavior, behavior and human resource management from Purdue. So we're very fortunate to have you here, by the way, and congratulations on graduating there in Purdue. And uh, he's um, presented at annual conferences for international organizations, such as Academy of Management and Society for Industrial and Organizational Psychology. Um, he'll be talking on um, engaging students, which, as we know, is probably the one, one of the more important um, teaching activities that we have, um, in addition to providing feedback and specific feedback to those students, which I'm uh, assuming a lot of the polling uh, technology that you're going to be presenting on will help provide us. So on that, I'd like to introduce Chris. Thank you. There you go. All right. Well, thanks for coming. Um, to get started, I just want to let you know that the, the title is a little bit deceiving. Um, we are going to be talking about online polling. And so if, if you're here for that, yes. Um, and the tool that, that I'm going to talk about is called Poll Everywhere. So, you know, it is polling. But the questions that they offer and the, the abilities that you're able to use, it's more than just your typical, you know, let's poll the class and see what they think, either A or B or doing multiple choice type things. So I want to give you some examples. So if you've got a computer or you've got a smartphone with you, please pull those out. Um, and even, I, I think this is being broadcast, is that right? Um, so even if anybody is watching that's not here in this room, you can participate as well. Um, so here's the first thing. So what you want to do, you'll see the question up at the top right under the question that says respond at pollev.com slash Hartwell. So if you go to that website on your phone or on your, uh, your computer, you can answer this question. So the question is rank each portion of today's conference so far from the most valuable to the least valuable. So we have our keynote message from Abby Benninghoff. Um, your first breakout session uh, that you attended, second breakout session, and then we just had lunch. So out of those four things, how would you rank them? Uh, so you go to pollev, so P-O-L-L-E-V dot com slash Hartwell. It's my last name, H-A-R-T-W-E-L-L. -L. So as you can see, as people, you know, add their voice to this discussion, uh, you can see those things changing. Uh, and you can see uh, where people are finding uh, the most value um, so far uh, in this conference. So this is a ranking type question uh, that you can do uh, as part of Poll Everywhere. Um, so the next slide, how are you feeling about the conference so far? And th here, this is an image, and you can place your marker anywhere on that image of how you're feeling. So you can see we have a, a kind of neutral, mostly over on the positive side. Um, one down there at the bottom, now moved, now moved. So, so you can see, you can play around with it, right? Um, and so this is, this is an image-based question. So you post an image, and then the class is able to, to post wherever they want uh, on that image. And I'll show you one way that I've used that uh, in courses as well. Okay, next question. Now this one is, um, this one is a, an open-ended question. So why are you attending this session? The open-ended questions and the multiple choice questions, you can use text if you want. And so you'll see you have the same website that you can go to, but you can also text a number and you text Hartwell to kind of get into the conversation and then you can answer it. And as people are up here, or as people add to this conversation, you can see it to become a better teacher, to increase student engagement. My boss made me. It's required. Um, so teaching 
IVC. This, that's what really got me into using Poll Everywhere, really, was, was IVC. So I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, my students hate paying for iClickers. That's another reason uh, that I like uh, Poll Everywhere. Um, thought I should this year have used Poll Everywhere, hoping to learn something new. Good. So we have those who have used it before, um, learning new ways to poll students, um, learning how to fit with what other people are doing. So all of this information is coming in. Um, and get engagements challenging in regional environments. I 100% agree with that. Um, would like to use Poll Everywhere. And all this data as it's coming in, just as the professor, just so you know, all of this information you can go back to later. And so, you know, if you're getting student comments and later you want to kind of uh, analyze those comments and, and see what kind of trends are coming out of those comments, this is all saved. You can go online later um, and you can get that information. OK, one more. So this is your general multiple choice. And again, you can answer this via text or via your, your computer smartphone on the web browser. Um, have you used online polling in your classes before? Yes, you've used iClicker or Reef. Um, yes, you've used Poll Everywhere. Yes, different polling tools, uh, multiple tools, or no, you haven't used it before. So you can see a vast majority have not used it um, so far. Um, some have used it with various tools, it looks like. And there are a lot of tools that are out there. So here's just kind of a sample. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Just a quick question. I noticed on this last one, once I answer it, it's not allowing me to answer a second time. Was that true as well for the first one? No, I think you can answer multiple responses for the free response or you noticed with the, the image one, you could do it multiple times, but it would move your marker, so you only had one marker at any time. Uh, and some of that is progr programmable uh, in Poll Everywhere. So if you want to do an open-ended, but you only want people to be able to answer once, um, you can program it that way. Um, so there, there are some options there. I, I just use the default options for all these questions, so what you're seeing um, from your end are the default options. And by the way, I, I'm not like paid by Poll Everywhere or anything like that. I just really have found that it's the best tool um, that I've seen to use. So here are some you know, other options that you have for polling. And this is just you know, some of them. Um, but what I like is Poll Everywhere on their website. You, know, you can go to polleverywhere.com versus, and it gives you some comparisons. And they talk about their methodology and how they've tried to be objective and that they're open to you know, people who disagree with what they're saying. You can look at all of these things and see which ones. You know, If you want to look at iClicker versus, um, versus Poll Everywhere and just that, then you can unclick everything else. But you can look at everything from pricing uh, to you know, some of the support, some of the experience what kind of poll types you're able to use. Um, and so when you're looking at what might work best for your specific situation, this is a good place uh, to go. Um, one of the reasons that I like Poll Everywhere, so, so let me back up a minute and say, when I started teaching here, I, I just finished my first year teaching here uh, at Utah State. And it was my first environment in teaching, or first time teaching in uh, a broadcast environment, which I hadn't done before. And I went into the first broadcast class, uh, and I realized really quickly that, like was mentioned, it's hard to engage people that you know, aren't there at the broadcast location, and you're trying to reach out. And you know, I tried doing some of the things that you've, you've probably tried doing in your class, where you, you know, cold call students or even you know, a certain regional campus. OK, can somebody from Brigham City answer this question for me? Um, or different things like that. But I still found you know, that, that I wasn't getting as much interaction as I would like. And so I'd used Poll Everywhere before, but mostly just the multiple choice polls that, that were easy to do. Um, so I went back and I started realizing some of the other options that I could use. And I realized that things particularly like the free form, the open response, um, was really helpful to me uh, in getting more engagement, getting more people to, to respond. 
kind of figure these students are using technology, why not utilize it? Um, rather than you know trying to put in the syllabus that you're not allowed to have your phones out or your computers out. For me, I'm trying to make the class engaging, um, and that means kind of trying to talk the student's language um, in technology. And so I found success so far uh, in using this. And what made me think that maybe, you know, I, uh, why I submitted a presentation for this is as I was doing one of my broadcast classes, after the class I noticed I had received an email from one of the facilitators that just happened to kind of be watching what was going on. Wasn't even, you know, part of my course or one of the facilitators there, but just emailed and says, what is this tool that you're using? Like, how are you able to get this information? So I just wanted to kind of share, share with others. So this, yeah. Good. So, so what was said was, you know, the city is there to help you when you're trying to figure out what's the best tool to use. Um, they've done a lot of research. They have a lot of partnerships, and, and they can help you um, figure out what's out there and, and what might work best. What I'm using right now is a free option with Poll Everywhere. They have an educational free version, uh, and so that's what I'm using here today. Um, one of the major drawbacks of that is that you are allowed to have uh, up to 40 responses to each question. And so if you have more than 40 students, um, then it's going to cut off after 40 responses. The other drawback is that it's completely anonymous. So you're not getting uh, any information as to which students are participating. Um, and so there are options. And if you look at, you know, we'll just look at uh, pricing real quick. If you look at Poll Everywhere for the higher education plans. Um, you can do it where the student pays per year, where the instructor pays per semester, or if it was something that you know a lot of people wanted to use, maybe it's something we could consider uh, university-wide. Um, so that's what you're looking at in terms of pricing. Uh, and like was said, uh, City can, can help you answer some more questions that way. Um, so, so that's a good tool to kind of compare options that you have. Um, utilize uh, City as well to help with that. So some of the features of Poll Everywhere. Um, again, I'm using the, the higher ed free version. You have the per student, per instructor, per instructor or the institution wide. Um, so like I mentioned, 40 responses per poll um, is all you're allowed to do free. And most of my classes fit in that range. So luckily, I haven't had to look at, at other options. Um, but it's something you might consider. One of the things that I do like, and you'll notice, is that um, these questions are embedded straight into PowerPoint, which is one of the options. Um, you can download an app. You can create polls directly in PowerPoint, um, display them directly in PowerPoint, or Keynote, or Google Slides. Um, and so that's one of the things that, that I really like. Um, and as I mentioned, you can't, there's some things like you can't do team competitions if you want to put people in groups, things like that. You can't do that unless you have uh, some of these uh, bigger plans. And automatic censoring. So that uh, open response question that I had, you may have some students who, you know, especially if they know that it's anonymous, uh, will throw out funny answers, which I've had and which are kind of fun, but you know, they may throw out things that are inappropriate or things that are vulgar, um, which I have not had to deal with uh, at this point. I teach at the master's level for the most part and, and haven't had to deal with much that way. Um, but that's something um, that you want to think about as well. The paid plans give you the option to moderate, so you see the comments as they're coming in, um, and you can kind of get rid of the ones that you don't want to show before you show them to, to the rest of the class. Okay, 
So here, here's your last one. Your, well, not your last question, but your last type of question. This is what's called a, a question and answer. So the question is, what's the biggest challenge or drawback to using online polling? And there's two parts to this. So you can, just like the open response, you can provide a response as an answer to this. The second thing is that you can look at the responses that have been provided and you can you know, give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. So yes, that's something that I'm dealing with too as a challenge, or no, I don't really think that's a challenge. And then it kind of rates them as to which ones are, are most agreed upon. So the first time I use something, leery of problems coming up uh, that you'd have to deal with right in front of the students, students taking it seriously, will it be distracting? Does it really add to what you're doing or does it kind of just distract um, from, from what you're trying to do? Uh, students getting connected, like with the eye clicker, um, students complain they don't have uh, access, incorporating into an already existing system, large classes, um, which is, again, one of the, the drawbacks to at least the free version of Poll Everywhere. Too much money, doesn't have the capabilities needed. So you can see um, some of the challenges uh, that, can, that can come up with online polling. And you have to kind of understand whether or not the environment that you're in, the class that you're teaching, the subject matter, the size, all of those things, if it's conducive uh, to uh, this type of learning, if it's adding or if it's uh, distracting uh, to the students. So we talked about, or we've gone through the number of, of question types. You have your multiple choice. I've used these a lot. One of the ways I use it in my on-campus classes is that I do these reading-related questions to start class, and I do sample exam questions like with reviews. Um, because that's one of the things that came back to me when I polled my students first and asked them what, they, what wasn't working well in the class or what they wish they had. Um, and they wanted more kind of feedback on how they were learning and how they were doing. Uh, and so I use those a lot uh, in, uh, in my on-campus classes. Um, Open-ended uh, allows you to get students' comments and anonymous comments uh, if it's something that students may not want to um, you know, say outright or open their hand and, and speak and let everybody see them say it. Um, And then again, the, the question and answer where you can kind of gauge consensus or agreement uh, among your class, your students. And ranking is the same kind of thing, kind of seeing how people, your, your students feel about certain things. And then finally, the clickable image uh, allows you to get general impressions um, from the students. Um, it's useful when you have figures uh, that you want to utilize. And I'll, I'll show you how I've used one of those uh, in just a second. And finally, you can create a survey that includes multiple questions if you want. Now, and so this is different than just doing a question after a question after a question. This is a new thing that Poll Everywhere has just come out with. I have not used it yet. Um, but basically, you have these questions that you put together in a poll. And then when you go to that first slide that starts the poll, the students can answer all of those questions without you having to move forward each slide. So they can kind of do it more at their own pace rather than waiting for everybody to answer each question before you move on. Now you'll notice that I'm using my phone. There is a Poll Everywhere app that they can use um, rather than you know, going online uh, or texting their answers. And then you can use that app uh, as well uh, in presenting. Uh, and it works just like uh, you know, a clicker would uh, for presenting. So here's an example of when I use the uh, image question. So I teach in the management department in the business school. I teach human resources. And so in one of my classes, we were talking about different values that organizations can have. And the students were to come prepared in class um, 
reading a number of, of articles about Amazon and their practices. Um, and then they had to say, okay, does this company, does Amazon have an internal focus? Do they look at their uh, employees? Is that where they place value or do they place value on the external, on the customer? And do they offer flexibility and discretion or do they value stability and control? And so I said, you know, on this two by two matrix, where would you place Amazon on this grid? And you can see the responses uh, that the students had. Uh, and from there, I could see, and it's kind of the way Amazon's culture is, um, that they're, they have pretty good agreement that it's mostly an external focus on the customer, um, but not quite as much agreement on whether they value flexibility uh, over stability and control. And so that, you know, the students can see where they fall compared to where the other students' perceptions are, and then you have a good class discussion um, about why students answered what they answered, what information were they using, and things like that. So that, that's how I've used the, the image response. And yes, you can answer as well. So like I mentioned, you can integrate it directly into PowerPoint, into Keynote, into Google Slides. And here's the last thing. If you don't want the answers to come up right at the beginning um, as you're doing it, there's a couple ways you, you can do this. First way is here. If you put a slide in beforehand, but the problem with that is that now I have to go in and I have to find that question here, and I have to activate the question. Now that I've activated it, you can answer the question. Uh, and it's not going to show the answers until I click onto the next slide, which is the actual poll itself. So I click over to that slide. The other way that you can do it is once you've clicked over to the slide, there's an option here that hides. And so if you click that hide option, then it just gives you those five options uh, and their answers are hidden until you decide you want to show them. And so the benefits that I found with using um, online uh, polling are these, these different types of questions. Um, like I mentioned, it's integrating this technology that they already used. Um, it's been helpful to kind of engage the more quiet or introverted students that may not want to raise their hand and vocally uh, answer questions. Um, broadcast locations, regional campuses, I found this to be a, a good benefit. Um, and it helps them to be active in the learning rather than just passively listening uh, to uh, a lecture. It adds variety. You know, we, I do a lot of other things like case studies and group work uh, and different things like that through my courses. Um, but this is just one more tool um, that adds to that variety. And, you know, I don't use it in every uh, class that I have, particularly on campus. Um, but uh, it's always there uh, when it is useful and when it's not just going to be distracting. Um, it's also a way to assess their learning, like I mentioned, in kind of a low-risk environment. You know, you're not giving them a graded quiz or an exam that's going to be part of, part of their grade, but it gives them a, some feedback before that that allows them to understand kind of where they sit, where they stand, what kind of questions they're likely to see uh, on the test, uh, so it can help them in their preparation as well. Uh, and gives them that immediate and objective feedback, as well as giving you uh, feedback from the students. Uh, and so it gives the students and the professor uh, that kind of uh, feedback that's hopefully useful. So that's just kind of a demonstration of how to use it when you might want to use it. Um, are there any other final uh, thoughts or questions? Uh, I have not had that happen. Um, and I don't know that everybody, you know, has a phone or a tablet, and I don't think you can require that they do have that, that they're in the class, which is why I don't make it required. It's not part of a participation grade or anything like that. Um, but yeah, that, that's probably an issue that, that you might come up with. Um, you know, I think it's becoming less and less of an issue, but I think there are still situations where uh, that type of information may not be available. It's a good, it's a good comment. Oh, 
Oh, okay. And then kind of hand them in to you or? Yeah, because they didn't always understand that it was just participation. Uh-huh. That was hard for some of them to understand. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a good thing. So they can still engage in it, maybe not online, um, but can write down their answers. Good idea. Any other thoughts, questions? Um, whoops, let me go back there. So the example using the graph could provide great discussion. That was one I didn't know that was there at the beginning when I started using Poll Everywhere, and it took me a while to realize that they had that image question, and it's, it really has been, been valuable, valuable. Teaching in media and politics, um, excited to use this with an IBC course. Good. So one of the other things, too, with, with Poll Everywhere, what you're seeing here is just kind of, you know, off the shelf, what you would throw into your slide. You can also uh, kind of make this your own. You can add background images or colors, change, change the way that it's formatted a little bit, things like that. So there are some things that you can do to, to kind of make it match the format that you're using. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So everything that you get here is automatically saved. Um, and so when you go back to your office later, you can go online and you've got this information saved. Um, and then, you know, if you're going back later on in the semester asking a similar same question and you want to see the difference, um, you can either save your first responses or what I think is even better is just create a second question, even if it's the same question. Um, and you might label it just slightly differently. Um, but then you, you have both of those there and you can make that comparison. Yeah, good question. Um, flexibility. Um, are there in-depth tutorials of poll uh, building? Yes, yes, there are tutorials and there's kind of a user's manual or an introductory manual online um, for poll everywhere. Um, and so there are tutorials that you can read through. There's also video tutorials um, that can help you kind of through this process, because it is a little bit of a learning curve uh, at the beginning. If you purchase the free classroom use, or you, you don't purchase, you use that, uh -huh. right? is it possible for students to prepare polls and conduct them? Yeah. Yeah, I think as long, I think as long as they've got kind of a, well, not even, I was going to say as long as they haven't, edu address, but that's not even true because the one I use, I use my Gmail as my login for it. Um, and so yeah, I think, I think students can use it. I'm not 100% sure because it's been a while since I signed up, but yeah, I think they can create their own account and they can do their own polls like if they were going to, you know, present in class or something like that. Yeah, I think they could use it. Don't, don't take that answer to the bank, check in on it, but, but I'm pretty sure that they would be able to do it. Okay. How easy it is, is it to learn how to integrate this with PowerPoint? Really easy. So basically, let me show you. You go to Poll Everywhere, you download the app, you open the app and it kind of installs itself. Then the next time you open Poll Everywhere, you have a Poll Everywhere tab here. And you go to that tab and you can create a new poll. You can insert a poll or you can insert a survey that you already have. You know, so if I wanted to insert a poll, it's going to bring up all the polls that I've created. And you can even put them in groups. So I have ones from my different classes. Um, and then you can click whatever you want to put in there. And you know, we'll insert a poll. And then all of a sudden, it's there. If I were to bring it up, then you'd see. And for this one, I haven't cleared out the responses. So you see the response uh, to, to the question here. So it's really easy to, to integrate it. Um, and there are, again, tutorials for how to do it. OK, well, thank you for your time. And you're welcome to, to answer that last question if you want. But I appreciate you, you being here. <laughs>